Hi guys, so I hope you all have enjoyed the content here so far. Um, this week we want to talk about daily care and we're going to break this into two weeks. Uh, this week I want to talk about washing one. Um, next week I want to talk about drying, working hair, parting hair. Um, so we needed to, it was kind of a bigger subject, we're going to break it down into two weeks. Um, today with washing I would like to, um, I know it's a fairly simple process, but there's a few things, um, some tips and tricks that make you, that we can help you just do a better job, kind of make your life a little easier as well. So for starters, I just want to talk about kind of our setup here. So for starters, I really like to see, um, it doesn't have to be fancy, but I like to see a cement floor for a couple different reasons. You don't want to be washing, putting water down in grass or mud or gravel. It just kind of makes more of a mess, makes your work area a little messier. But with that, I really like to put um, kind of a pad down for them to stand on. And we like to use these heavy duty rubber mats. Um, again, you can buy them at your local um, farm and ranch store. Um, they're really heavy, so they don't move. If you get the lighter ones, they'll kind of move on you. The reason I like the mats is one, um, cattle stand on the wash rack longer than we probably think. And um, so we wanna make sure that's a soft surface. The other thing we wanna make sure is that they're not slipping. So when this cement gets wet, it gets just a little bit slippery. And so we wanna make sure um, that we have a solid foundation for them to stand on. The next thing I like to see is just a really good, strong tie rail, something stout. Because a lot of times when you're washing, you wanna to wanna to pull back. Um, and then we always tie them with their head up, just so we have more control. When we're working on them, we always want that calf to be have their head tied up. Now here we've got these um, posts we put in the cement. Again, it's not necessary. Um, it's just one of those things that's gonna make your life a little easier. That calf can't swing back and forth. Um, it's also important that we have these hit these calves kind of right in their heart or the shoulder. Um, they're still able to move back and forth, but it doesn't, they aren't going to swing all the way around. So that, that's going to make your life a lot easier. This one is kind of built for bigger bred cattle, um, maybe some fat steers. These are a little smaller, narrower for uh, baby calves, um, you know, five to eight, nine hundred pounders. So they're not swinging back and forth on you. So again, um, that's kind of our setup. It just makes our life a little bit easier. We got a drain back here, um, just so all that that water's draining back. Again, just like we talked about last week in our video, um, we want them standing uphill slightly as well. Whenever we've got cattle tied up, I like to make sure that they're on an incline. So, the first thing that I like to do, and this is an easy step to skip um, if you're running in a hurry, um, but if you will make it a practice to before you ever put any water or soap in your calf is to go grab your blower and blow the dirt and the debris and you can see on this heifer in particular she's got a bunch of hay particles and i promise we didn't stage this this is how they come in 90 percent of the time we don't use hay rings at our place um, just for fear that they're going to rub on them and so we just put loose free choice hay out there and they're always kind of rubbing on the hay and kind of getting down in it and so all this debris that you see in them um, and there's a lot of dirt in there we've had a lot of mud we've had a lot of rain the last couple days and so there's a lot of mud um, and dirt in their hide and hair so if we'll just take about 30 seconds and blow this calf off real quick now for demonstration purposes right now I'm just going to work on this side so I'm going to go grab my blower, and we always keep a blower on the wash rack at all times. So you can see over there, it's just hung up stationary over there. So it's always on the wash rack. We can grab it quick. A lot of times we'll actually dry cattle on the wash rack, but it's always there for us to get started with. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to blow this calf out. And I know it doesn't seem like much, but, you know, if you've got dirt in this cattle from being out in their pen, and you put water on it, that dirt obviously is going to turn to mud. And so if we can get just a little bit of that dirt um, and the big chunks off of them before we ever start washing them will help you out a lot.
Now, we've got, like again, I say that only took just a, a few seconds, but it's really gonna help you. Um, and sometimes they come in even dirtier than that. Now, the old traditional way, there's a few things I'm gonna talk about the way I used to do it. One is, I used to not use a foamer. So over here you'll see we have two different foamers. We've got, and we just label them at our place. This is the shampoo one, the S, and this is the conditioner. So just so we keep them separate. Um, I really like these uh, Weaver Pro Foamers, um, and you're gonna see here in a second why. For a couple different reasons. We save a lot of money just in, we're using a little less shampoo all the time. And the reason I say that is the old method that I used to do, and maybe not with a, with a bottle like this, but we used to put them in smaller bottles. And we used to turn this on and we used to tip this up and we kind of just aim and shoot and get as much on there as we could. Well, a couple things, when we're doing that, we're, a lot of that shampoo and soap is just going right down onto the ground. We're never actually getting it up there. And we're actually using quite a bit more because it doesn't set up and foam up. And you're gonna see why that foamer does such a good job when we actually start to put some, some product on. Now the other thing I used to do is, and this is something Kirk Steerwalt taught me, and I think it works really well, is instead of washing this one first, we're just gonna apply the shampoo right on it. And I never thought of it this way, but if you take and you just put water on that right now, you're kind of creating a barrier. So we've got our dirt, right here, we put water on it, and then we try to put the shampoo on top of the water. And so if we'll just, um, what I do now is, I'll just put the shampoo right on that dry hair and hide. And it gets right on the dirt right where you want it. So that's another thing that um, I've kind of changed in our program as we progress. So I'm gonna show you how this foamer works. Um, again, I think they pay for themselves. They're a really good tool, um, just because you save that money in shampoo. So I'm gonna start applying this shampoo. And again, we're just gonna do this one size. That just snaps on there, snaps back off. Now, I'm gonna apply this on, again, this is a, a dry cap. The other reason I really like this foamer is you're able to apply it right where you want it. You can use really good aim on this. You're getting that really good suds effect out of it. You can really get the underlines really good. Now again, when we're washing them, Something you want to watch is we don't want to keep get any into their gear. Well, we want to make sure we cover that head really well. But you can see we're keeping that gear from any water getting into it. Now, the shampoo that I use today is the coconut shampoo. Sometimes I mix our mild shampoo and our coconut shampoo. Um, when we're washing, we're only going to actually say we rinse this heifer almost every day. We're only going to actually apply shampoo maybe two or three times a week. So we're not actually washing cattle every time we bring them in. But tonight we're going to wash this one. Now, I like to use this scrub brush. And the other reason, you know, I was talking about the foamer, how it does a good job of applying the shampoo really well. There's a couple places that I think cattle we do we don't get very clean and you can see how that lathers it up really well too it gets it really foamy um, where i don't think we get cattle super clean all the time and especially on a bred heifer and it's a really important area but it's that distance from their chest floor back to their navel for some reason that can get where we don't get just a bunch of shampoo it's just one of those places it's a little hidden so i think it's really important to keep in mind right here because when you're looking at a calf on the silhouette, that's one of the most important places to see that sweep to their rib. And so um, I really like that foamer because you kind of get down into those certain areas. Now with this scrub brush, I scrub in all different directions. Now this is personal preference. Some of the other pro staff members might go all in one direction. Um, again, that's just personal preference. When I'm scrubbing one, 
my main objective is to get that hair and hide clean. So I'm scrubbing in all di different directions. I just want to make sure that I'm getting that gap clean. So we're just going to run through this real quick for demonstration purposes. But while we're while I'm scrubbing this gap, again I want you to see that we're getting all every square inch of this calf and you can see this one's been a little muddy out in their pen now i like to use this scrub brush for their body and do every everywhere now where that hair's a little shorter i might come in and just grab me a rice root brush just any old scrub scrub brush and it's just got a little finer you can see the difference there it's got just a little finer area so when we're scrubbing their feet and this is an area that gets missed a lot too their feet so when we're you see how bloody their feet it are in the back we want to make sure this scrub brush doesn't do as good a job on their hooves so we'll use this scrub brush here now you can also see if you'll bring that around Cattle get a lot of, especially this time of year, they'll get a lot of, when it's wet out, they'll get a lot of manure and mud jammed up between those toes right here. And what happens is sometimes that can really affect the way they move. Sometimes we'll see um, cattle really start to pop their pastures that normally don't do that structurally. And so we really wanna make sure that we're getting the insides of these cleaned out. And I'll actually just run my finger through those hooves if they'll let you and just get that good and cleaned out so i'll just run my fingers through there i'll run water through there that's something my uncle bob taught me you're also going to keep cattle from getting foot rot i think that's one thing that a lot of times gets overlooked we'll get one all cleaned all dried and we'll look down and they've got hay mud manure stuck up in between those feet so again that's one thing that um, I always look for when we're washing cattle is I make sure those feet get really clean. So again, we're just running that water through those hooves. You see back here again, just running that water through there, making sure it's front and back. And we're not leaving a bunch of stuff in there so we don't get any kind of foot rot or any unnecessary popping of the pastures there. Now, when I'm scrubbing one, and you'll see, you can see this hair's all going in a different direction. When I feel like I've got this calf good and clean, we've got them scrubbed all over. What I like to do is, so we've got the hard work done. If you'll just take your scrub brush and scrub all that hair straight down, what that does is it gives the, uh, the shampoo and the dirt and the dandruff and the mud, everything that was in that calf, it gives it a path for it to go out of. So when I run water back over this, you're gonna notice that it's a little bit more um, advantageous. The gravity flow will just pull that soap shampoo because the, the last thing we wanna do after doing all this work is we don't want to leave any shampoo or dirt because we've got this calf clean now. We just wanna make sure that we get it out of the, the hide. A lot of times when we start to see dirt and dandruff start to pile up, it's because we don't get that dandruff out of them as well. Um, I missed this earlier, but up on their heads, especially after we've sheared their heads, I'll also go back to this um, rice root brush and scrub on their heads. Where that hair, anywhere that where that hair is just a little bit shorter, and this does just a little bit better job than this because it's got a little finer. So back here where it's a little shorter on our butt, we might use that. Um, just switch over. So again, we're going to make sure all this is going downwards. It gets all that hair kind of going back in the right direction. We'll come back here and we're going to use this water. And I just want you to kind of notice, and if you might have to zoom in a little, but you'll see that this water the, just by combing that down or scrubbing that down, it's going to carry this product out of there. You see how it just gives it a path to leave the body. Again, we've done all the hard work to this point. We just want to make sure 
we're getting everything out now that we've got them clean. If you bear with me a second, um, again, I talked about how we want to make sure all this gets out. I'm going to leave a little bit of a, a section here for us because this is a good way to just check your work. So if you'll just take a comb, and this is a good way to make sure that you've got it all out. Now you're going to see, because I didn't do a very good job of getting that out, I need to spend some more time. This does two things. It's going to help you when it comes time to dry it because you're getting the bulk of the um, water out of them. The other thing it does is it checks your work. So if you have any shampoo left in there, if you have any mud left in there, you're going to see it as it flows out. You can see, see how when we got down there to the bottom, it started to look like foam. So we still, we know we still got shampoo in there. So if you'll take this and just run this down your calf, I think more than anything, it just makes sure that we got that calf clean. So again, I'm going to finish up this heifer. Um, we've got to get the rest of this water out. But um, if you have any questions about what we're talking about, feel free to uh, message us. Uh, make a comment in the comment section. We're as well going to add a link um, to the website for thewinnersbrand.com. We've got some more tips on there. We're going to put a link on there to my um, cattle company page. We may have to start doing the live feeds from there. We've had a lot of response and a lot of followers the last couple weeks. So we may send you to that page. page. I encourage you to like our cattle company page. Um, but again, next week, if you'll join us next Monday, we're going to continue this. We're going to go over parting their hair, working their hair with a scrub brush and a rice root, um, the proper way to, to dry one. Um, so again, the next couple weeks, we're going to focus on daily care. So I appreciate you joining us, and I look forward to seeing you next week.